Okay, so the thing I was saying in the last video um, is that your examples can come from all kinds of places. They can come from your personal life and things you've experienced. They can come from books and movies and TV shows and music and stuff. If you want to quote other people uh, and other kinds of media uh, in your papers, totally reasonable thing to do. Um, they can come from other classes. If you're taking a psychology class and your psychology teacher is talking about the nature of love, you are welcome to quote that. Um, in here, if you want to get something, and, and if you get something from like a psychology textbook or a psychology, a trustworthy psychology website, you could quote that in your papers or in your comments on the discussion board. That's a little advanced for comments on the discussion board, but you could do it. Um, right, you could do these things. Um, and then your papers are better if your examples are coming from lots of different places. And one of the key differences between, one of the things that marks the A paper, an A, is it has examples from all over the place. It's got personal examples, but it also has examples from books and movies, and it also has examples from research. Um, so, you know, feel free to pull your examples from your own experience. Um, crucial with examples is you want to be specific. Um, so your example, think about making it for, making a movie out of your example. Um, you want your example to be vivid and specific. So don't say a guy can fall in love with a girl. Tell me which girl, which guy, what's the situation? Give me the details. That's why movies are often easier to talk about. than if you make up an example in your head, you can do that. Um, that's totally fine. But when my students make up examples in their head, they often tend to come out like... Um, like my students will just say things like, well, you know, uh, a guy can love a girl a lot and he'll change his mind, uh, but then uh, friendship lasts longer. That's not really an example because it, it doesn't have enough detail. Um, whereas if you pick a particular person, someone you knew in your life or somebody uh, from a movie or a TV show or a book or whatever, uh, is, a, is a more interesting. It's more interesting to read. It's more specific. And it's you can write more about it. Um, one of the things we're trying to avoid is vague examples. Vague means like unclear, unspecific. So if you just say a person, could be anybody. Um, but if you say a particular person, like, uh, you know, I don't know, I, now I can't think of an example, but you know, Tony Stark or whatever, I don't know why my examples are coming from Avengers today. Um, but pick a particular person in a particular situation, right? Um, in Twilight is Bella's friendship with Jacob more valuable potentially than her romantic relationship with Edward. Um, something like that. I don't know. And that's what you're gonna. That's what you're doing in the class. Remember, everything we're doing here has already been covered. Um, it's the first half of that handout called "How to Write an Essay," um, and it is going to. It's got everything you need on it. Uh, really, just the first half of that. If you can just do those things over and over and over again, and I will help you make it more specific and make it better. Um, but if you can just do those things, um, you're going to be in a very good position uh, in the class. You're going to. You're going to be. You can have a B. If you want the A, you just got to do a little bit more, and I'll show you how to do that too. Not difficult. All right, so let's take a look at the bottom of page two on the features here. Um, so let's re let's sort of review this again. Um, this is this is Phaedrus saying Lysias's speech. You know how matters stand with me. That's Lysias, and how, as I conceive, meaning as I imagine it, this affair, this romantic relationship, may be arranged for the advantage of both of us. And I maintain that I ought not to fail in my suit, meaning I I, I think I, you ought to be with me because I am not your lover, right? You should be in a romantic relationship with me because I don't love you. For lovers repent of the kindnesses which they have shown when their passion ceases. In other words, people in love change and then they regret what they did, uh, the nice things they did. But to the non-lovers who are free and not under any compulsion, right? People who aren't in love are not being forced by their emotions to be nice. Um, no time of repentance ever comes. They don't have to feel bad about what they did. They just chose to do it. They weren't forced to do it by the power of love. For they confer their benefits according to the measure of their ability in the way which is most conducive to their own interest, right? They, they, they're just being reasonable, rational people uh, doing things that, that interest them. Then again, Lovers, and, you know, we're back to, so let's talk about lovers. And remember, remember, uh, Lysias' point is that being in love is bad. Then again, so here's, remember I said you have to have a reason? So here's his reason why it's, he, right here is his reason why it's better to be with someone who doesn't love you rather than someone that does. When he says then again here, he's doing something that I ask you guys to do in this class, which is he is giving a second reason. He doesn't just have one reason. And you think about it, he's making a crazy argument, right? He's saying it's better to marry someone who doesn't love you. So boy, I'm glad he's got a reason, 
but it's such a crazy argument. He's going to need more reasons to convince me. Just one reason. He's not going to do it. It's not going to be enough. Um, so he has multiple reasons. And this is what I was saying in your papers. Um, when you get a quote, you can say, you know, how much do you agree or disagree with it? Um, but you don't have to stop there. You can say, I agree with this quote because blah, 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 blah. Then you can start a whole new paragraph and go, another reason I agree with this quote is, and you can do another reason with other examples. Um, you know, remember at that point, you also have the option to pick a different quote, right? So you could you, you can do a quote from Plato and then you can say, I agree with it for this reason. And then you can do another quote from Plato and say, I agree with that for this reason. You can pick another quote from Plato and you can say, I disagree with that for this reason. But you can also stay with the same quote and say, I think Plato's right for this reason. Another reason he's right is, another reason he's right is all about the same quote and do that as much as you can. You can repeat these moves. Now, I recommend doing these kinds of moves on, that I gave you on the piece of paper. Try to do them at least once so that I can see that you know that they exist, um, that, you, that you're practicing. But if you wanna make your thing longer, just do it again. I have a second reason, I have a third reason. So let's take a look at Lysias's second reason why um, it's better to be with someone who loves you. Uh, someone who, it's better being, let's tell, <laughs> going too fast. Let's look again at L Lysias's argument about why it's better to be in a romantic relationship with someone that doesn't love you. Lovers, right, people in love, consider how by reason of their love, they have neglected their own concerns and rendered service to others. And when these benefits and when to these benefits conferred, they add the troubles which they have endured. They think that they have long ago made to the beloved a very ample return. Um, he's saying it's pretty much the same thing he said before, but he's saying that people, um, people who are in love, uh, they they feel like um, uh, they've neglected their own life, right? Because love forced them to pay attention to other people. Um, so they've neglected their own concerns and rendered service to others. People in love, uh, the person they're in love with takes all their attention and they're, they start ignoring their own concerns. They, they're not doing their schoolwork. They're not going to their job, right? They're, they're not doing, they're not taking care of their house. They're not doing things. They're not looking after the, They forget to walk the dog because they spent the night at someone's house. See how that's a specific example. You can picture that in your mind. Um, right. So they, they regret these things. And uh, and when to these benefits conferred, they add on the troubles they've endured, because it's difficult to take care of the person you're in love with. They think that they have long ago made to the beloved a very ample return, right? They feel like they, they, they feel like it's one way. This is because people in love, they feel forced to give and give and give and give to the person they're in love with. But they start to feel regret that it's like only going in one direction. Um, and then that makes them angry and it makes them upset. Because one of the big things that this book is about is that love is irrational, that it doesn't really make logical sense. Um, and that's something that is going to be covered, and we're going to be talking about that more and more and more. So let's take a look down here. Um, so he's talking, and, and, and then he goes to the next person. So he says the people in love are going to do, they're going to neglect their own concerns, helping other people, the person they're in love with. Um, he says, but the non-lover, meaning, you know, me, you should be with me because I don't love you, he says, the non-lover has no such tormenting re recollections. He has never neglected his affairs. Meaning, right, the person who doesn't love you um, didn't ignore, they weren't so crazy with love that they ignored their own life, um, right? They never, I'm on the top of the next page, they never quarreled with his relations. He has no troubles to add up or excuse to invent and being well rid of all these evils. Why should he not freely do what will gratify the beloved? Um, right, meaning that someone who doesn't love you didn't fuck up his own life chasing you, uh, and therefore is going to be a better person to be with because they haven't sort of messed up their whole situation. They're not fighting with their family. Love made me tell my parents that I refuse to come home, but I have to be with the person I love, and I snuck out of the house to see them. So you can't. Uh, someone not in love won't do crazy stuff like that, and their life will be better, and then they're going to be free to be nice to you rather than love, which like forces people to be nice to you. Um, people feel like the love in their heart, they're forced to do nice things and then they regret them, they screw up their own life. And he says, that's why it's better to be with a non-lover. They're more reasonable. You see how I put some specific examples in there, right? He says, quarreled with relations. I would say, in other words, fighting with your family. Then I gave an example, sneaking out of the house and getting in trouble to be with the person you love. So just like that, every step of the way, you do those things, just like the worksheet says, right? Quote it, put the quote in your own words, give an example. Cool. See you in the next video.